Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm Ron Mackenzie Lafergie. Rapa Nui, otherwise known as Easter Island, is the home of the mysterious and majestic statues known as the Moai. These have taken up residence in pop culture, showing up everywhere from television shows to comic strips. But what are they and where the heck did they come from? Let's explore. If you want more videos like this, check out our biggest debated topics playlist on the channel. Now get ready, it's time to ask the question, where did the Moai statues on Easter Island come from? Let's start off by dispelling a rather prevalent misconception. Many mistakenly refer to these statues as the Easter Island heads. However, these statues are more than just heads. They were actually made with torsos as well. The problem is, many of them have been toppled and largely covered by the ground, such that only the head is visible. One other misconception is with regards to the hat-like things seen on certain statues. As it turns out, these aren't hats, but are actually meant to signify hair tied in a ball on top of the head. The natives called these pukao, but they would be better known to us as top nuts. It was believed that mystical power, or mana, was preserved in the hair, leading chieftains to refrain from cutting their hair. This has some interesting parallels to the biblical tale of Samson, although so that's likely coincidental. So, these aren't just heads, they're whole bodies, and they aren't hats, they're top knots. What else do we know about these hulking statues? Well, there are almost a thousand of these statues, some reaching as much as 10 meters in height and up to 86 tons in weight. The majority were carved from Rano Roraku, a volcano found in the region, using compressed volcanic ash called tuff, which is easy to carve. This was important since the stone tools used would not have had the same effect on harder materials. So great, we know how big they are and how they were made, but why the heck would they go through all the trouble? Well, these statues were built to honor important people such as chieftains after their death. This is why each stone has unique features. They were meant to represent specific people with their own characteristics. They would then be placed on stone tombs for the person of honor, called Ahu. As one would suspect, the statues seem to be of religious importance to the people of the island. Jacob Rochevain, the first European visitor to the island in 1722, wrote in his ship log that he saw people praying to the idols and even saw some, whom he assumed to be priests, performing even more intensive prayers and rituals. However, for all we do know, one question has confused researchers for years. How on earth did they transport these statues, weighing up to 86 tons, from the quarry to their eventual resting places? Something tells me they didn't rent a U-Haul. When looking at Moai that fell over while being transported, some on their front and some on their back, it seems likely that they were moved upright, so that they didn't need to try to lift them when they reached the destination. With regards to how this upright transportation was achieved, there are two main ideas. The first and most accepted idea is that they rolled them along on logs, allowing for relatively quick and safe transportation. This would explain the disappearance of trees seen on the island although some claim that it could have been an invasive species of rats that caused this. However, a second rather interesting explanation has been given for this pickle. By attaching ropes to the top of the head and leaning it back and forth, you can cause the statue to slowly move forward, similar to how you would shift a heavy fridge. This lines up with the oral tradition of the people of the island, who claimed that the statues walked to their destinations. Could be that this rocking motion is what they were referring to. However, this method doesn't explain where the trees went, and will be rather dangerous since they could fall over. Not to mention that this is significantly slower than the roller method. Finally, we should probably touch on one further explanation for these stones. Aliens. This is an explanation that many view as highly unlikely, but draws a good deal of attention from more conspiratorially minded folks. Some claim that the people simply couldn't have moved the statues such far distances, and that it must have been the work of advanced aliens with their own goals. However, much of the evidence points to a human source to these statues, particularly the finding that the statues found in higher elevations tend to be significantly smaller than the others. This supports a human origin, since it would be more difficult for people to maneuver them uphill. If aliens were in charge, they likely wouldn't be limited in this respect. And now we return to our question, where did the Moai statues on Easter Island come from? Well, if we're being technical, most of them came from Rano Raraku, a volcanic crater on the island, since that's where their materials were taken from. However, if we're looking at the more common question of how they came to be placed where they are, whether it be human or alien, the scientific consensus is that humans did the job. We're not certain how, but we have a number of theories, which will require further evidence to confirm one way or another. At the end of the day, it's up to you to decide what you believe, or maybe even go to Easter Island and discover the truth yourself. Thank you for watching Life's Biggest Questions. I hope this was interesting and informative, and maybe even inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you like this video, please thumbs up and subscribe to the channel down below. While you're down there, let me know what you think of all this in the comment section. Until next time, I'm Ron McKenzie Lafergie with Life's Biggest Questions, wishing you the best of luck on your quest for answers.